In this CAD for Newbies tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create detailed graphics in Fusion 360 using SVGs created in a free program called Inkscape, which is a fantastic alternative to Illustrator. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to another CAD for Newbies. This is Inkscape. So believe it or not, I've been using Inkscape for quite a while. I actually used this back in uni before I could afford Illustrator. Now the reason I want to make this video is recently I've been showing detailed graphics in my 3D models in Fusion 360 and I create that by importing an SVG, which is a type of vector. You can then use these vectors in Fusion 360 to emboss or cut away detailed shapes when you can't really model them in using the tools within Fusion 360. But I've been doing this with Illustrator, and the thing is, Illustrator is not free, but Inkscape is, and it's actually an incredibly powerful and capable bit of software. So I wanted to show you how to create SVGs out of Inkscape and bring them into Fusion 360, either by drawing them indirectly or actually tracing existing bitmaps and images to then get a vector which you can then export as an SVG. So let's start with the first, which is just creating a standard SVG from scratch using Inkscape. Now, if you've used Illustrator before, the interface for Inkscape might be kind of familiar, but also a little bit confusing sometimes. But basically, I'm just gonna show you how to do a simple text over a curve, which you can't do in Fusion. That's a great example of why you might wanna use Inkscape to create a text SVG. So to do that, I'm just gonna get a uh, line here. So over here, draw a curve. Just draw a nice curve here, like that. There we go. There we go, zoom in using the control and scroll wheel. So we have a nice curved line here and just like Illustrator, you can select your control points and move uh, the curve directly like this. It's actually like splines in Fusion 360. Very, very good for creating organic curves. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm now gonna select the text tool, create text, select here. And it's gonna go, let's go hello world. The classic hello world, let's do that and I select my font. Uh, let's go to, do, do, do. what uh, do I want? <laughs> let's do Comic Sans, why not? And let's make it a bit bigger. Let's make it say this size, a little bit smaller actually. Let's make it 48. You can make this obviously any size you like. Okay, and what I wanna do is sit this text on this curve because you can do text directly in Fusion 360, but you can't make it all fancy and curve, which is what we can do here. So I'm gonna select the curve and select the text holding shift. And then under text, we can put on path. Bam, there you go. So we have the text on our path there and we can directly edit our path if we like to change how the text is, uh, is shown. So select that control curve again and we can change exactly how we want it. Um, bring this one in a bit. <laughs> it's bunching up a bit there and change our control point there. That's pretty awful, but it's just a tutorial. I'm sure you'll spend more time on it. Okay, now we've got that. We've got our nice curved text. We want to convert it to outlines. This is important because to create an SVG, we need outlines. So to do that, you select the text and then under path, you do object to path. And it looks like nothing's changed, but if we do the control point edit, so edit path by nodes, you'll see when we select each letter, it's now made up of lots of control points. It's no longer font. You can no longer edit it. It's set, which is great. And we're done with our control curve, so we can just delete that. And just to show how it's gonna import into Fusion, I'll do control A to select all. And then over on our fill and stroke menu, which you access by shift control F, if you wanna bring it up, we'll get rid of our fill, delete. And under stroke, we'll just bring in a stroke. It doesn't matter about the thickness, it's just to visualize. And this is how our SVG, our vectors, will be brought into Fusion 360. Now the genius thing about uh, vectors is there's no scaling issue. It's not like a JPEG where there's pixels. You can make this as big or as small as you like and it won't lose any details. So don't worry about scaling it exactly to suit Fusion. It doesn't matter. We're just gonna export it as it is and do the scaling in Fusion later. So I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna to go to File, Save As, and I'm gonna save it as Hello World. And 
Uh, Inkscape gives you two options, Inkscape SVG or plain SVG. I, it seems to work fine as Inkscape SVG in my test, so I'm just gonna leave it like that and save. Now let's head back over to Fusion and I've just got this uh, sliding puzzle, which I did a huge tutorial on, by the way, if you wanna find it here on actually making this puzzle and importing SVGs. But I'm just gonna show you how to do the SVG part here. So click insert, insert SVG, and select the face you wanna bring it in on. So one of these tiles will be fine. And then bring it in, hello world, open. Uh, so for some reason, it tends to bring in the SVGs upside down. This happens in Illustrator too. I'm not sure why, but anyway, it doesn't matter. You can rotate them around, move them into place, and of course you can scale them. So this is what I mean about not worrying about scale initially. You can if you want, but it's fine. And I'm just gonna bring this in. This is not really suitable for the puzzle, but for the tutorial it's fine. Uh, okay. And you'll notice that the SVG then turns green, the lines turn green. Why are they green? Well, what Fusion does is it will lock or fix the lines so you can't accidentally move them because we don't have any dimensions on this. And when you're normally drawing sketches in Fusion 360, you want to have dimensions to tell it where it should be in space, but we don't do that with SVGs. If you do want to change it, which I don't advise, you can right click each sort of separate line and uh, unfix, and you'll notice they'll go blue like this, and then you can change them. But I'm not gonna do that here. There's pretty much no reason you'd ever wanna do that. Okay, stop sketch. And now you can do whatever you like with this SVG. For example, I can extrude it. So I can go and select all the outlines like this to then extrude like that. And we'll do a extrude cut and I'll do minus 0 0.5. So it's gonna cut down into our puzzle. And there you go. Now, if you can't select the outline like this, it means it's not complete or there might be duplicate lines, weird things like that. Go check your SVG, see if you need to join any gaps or if there's double lines you can delete. Or you can also do it if you have to in Fusion by adding a line in just to bridge gaps if you need to. But ideally you want it to be like this as soon as you bring it in. So now I'm gonna show you something a little bit more powerful and that is tracing an image in Inkscape to then bring in that traced SVG. Alrighty, here I have the Vault-Tec logo. Now, I do not own any of the rights to Vault-Tec or Fallout or anything like that. That's all Bethesda. Uh, but I did use this image in my fan build of the Vault-Tec 3D printer. And the thing about it is it's an image. It's a JPEG. So if I zoom in here, it's pixelated. So I've just dropped this into Inkscape. You can just drag it in from a folder or you can go to File and then Import. Uh, Inkscape will let you import a whole range of images and image formats, but we need a vector to bring it into Fusion 360. And to do this, I'm going to trace this. So believe it or not, Inkscape has an incredibly powerful image tracing uh, capability built into it. It's really good. So to use image trace in Inkscape, you want to select the image like this, and then you want to go to path and then trace bitmap. There we go and then click live preview so you can see what the output's gonna be. Now, tracing your image is a little bit art and science. It really depends on how good the image quality is. It depends if there's any other colors to it. It depends how clean the edges are, all that sort of stuff. And you'll want to play with these settings intensely to find the best option for you to get the best detail across. Luckily for me, um, this is a pretty simple image to trace. I mean, hard lines, no different colors, it's just black and white. So the brightness cutoff works well for me here. And this is just determining a certain cutoff and threshold of, white, of bright and dark to then leave you with a traced image. Uh, edge detection is where you want to trace actual lines and uh, that's not gonna be suitable for this. See, it just gives you a trace of the actual outlines. Um, and then uh, in terms of color and grayscale, you can have those options down here as well if it's got multiple colors. For example, it'll sort of, uh, I don't know if quantize is the right word, but it'll like, it'll leave you if you have a gradient of, of various colors to like three or four or five, depending on how many scans you give it. Anyway, not going into detail, brightness cutoff is perfect for anything that's just black and white. So happy with that and I'll select okay. Simple as that. Check that out. That's really clean for me not tweaking anything. So it has to do a bit of guessing, obviously, because you zoom in, it is pixelated on the original image. 
And if you see the, uh, the nodes here, it has to figure out where to trace that path. But that result is really good. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is just get rid of the uh, original, which is here, get rid of that. And here we have our trace. And you can see like some areas of the U and stuff could be better. I could have tweaked the cutoff and the amount of nodes a little bit. Um, but honestly for 3D prints, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna get rid of the fill again and do a stroke to show you what it will be when we bring it into Fusion 360. And once again, file and then save as, I'm gonna save it as an SVG. And once again, in Fusion 360, same process, insert, insert SVG, and then we're gonna select our SVG and select the face and do the whole organizing and rotating thing to make it into the right place. Let's do it, do it at a diagonal, shall we? Uh, that'll do. Obviously, you don't get much precision when working with SVGs, but that's fine. Stop sketch, and we can now do another extrude cut with this. Select all the parts, and then do another minus 0 0.5. Bam, just like that. So there you have it guys, that's how to use Inkscape to create SVGs for your 3D models using Fusion 360 or any other CAD package to create those detailed images that you can't really do with conventional 3D modeling, like you just want to trace a logo or an image and then bring it in and cut or emboss on an actual 3D model. And it's free, so you can find the download link below to Inkscape. And if you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse, I would love to have you subscribe. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.